When I was 11 years old, my family took a trip back east, and during this time, I had a chance to visit Oriole Park at Camden Yards. I didn't actually get to attend an Orioles game on this trip because they were out of town, but I was still impressed with the facility nonetheless. It was amazing. Now, I do have to admit that's because the only other ballparks I had seen up until this point of my life were Candlestick Park and the Oakland Coliseum. Don't get me wrong. I love both of those places. They will always hold a special place in my heart, but none of them looked like Camden Yards. None of them felt like Camden Yards. It was being in a whole different type of world when it came to sporting venues. Some 25-ish years later, I actually would have a chance to see the Orioles play at Camden Yards, and it blew my mind. As awestruck as I was as a kid, I still felt those feelings seeing a game at this beautiful ballpark decades later. It represents everything I really enjoy about baseball, the history, the aesthetics, the look, the feel. Camden Yards has, it, it just embodies everything you would want baseball to be, or at least attending a baseball game to be. Despite this, Baltimore Orioles chairman and CEO John Angelo spent most of this summer refusing to commit to this absolute cathedral of baseball. The O's were never a flight risk, but there was no need for ownership to act in this selfish, greedy manner. We'll get to that in a little bit, though. The team eventually signed a 30-year lease at Camden Yards, which can actually be extended twice with each of these extensions covering a five-year period. That's great news, but it also begs the question, why did we need to go through this song and dance in the first place? Everyone who's attended a game at Camden Yards, well, not everyone, but most people who've attended a game here will admit it is one of the better ballparks in all of Major League Baseball. When I attended a game in September, I was absolutely floored by how well Oriole Park at Camden Yards has held up through all of these years. We're talking about a stadium that is 30-ish years old and doesn't look it at all. I have no doubt Oriole Park at Camden Yards will become one of MLB's great institutions alongside Fenway, Dodger Stadium, and Wrigley Field. However, all of that was cast aside so some dude who is nothing more than a byproduct of nepotism and luck could nickel and dime taxpayers for a few more publicly funded dollars. The entire saga with Camden Yards and Oriole ownership and obviously Rob Manfred goes to show once again the MLB has the need, the need for greed. These days we have numerous owners cajoling and complaining and pandering and just being dicks to try and get new stadiums or money to renovate their current stadiums or whatever the case may be. The thing is, the owner in question has gone about this in the completely wrong fashion. Milwaukee, Chicago, Oakland, and the list goes on and on. Major League Baseball owners have proven they have no shame, and in fact, that they just are addicted to being greedy when it comes to stadium renovations or trying to get new stadiums. The thing with the Orioles and John Angelos, though, is that this was so dumb and pointless and unnecessary and unneeded, just like all of those other words to describe unnecessary were. It was just being greedy for greed's sake. We knew the Orioles weren't going to go anywhere, although there was some flirtation with Nashville. It never really seemed all of that serious. You again heard all of this talk about how the Orioles didn't want to leave, everyone loves Camden Yards, Blah, 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 and yet Angelos and the team refused to sign a lease extension that had been on the table for months. Now, there are rumors and in windows on why Angelos didn't want to sign the lease when it was first proposed. Everything, including he was hoping to get some redevelopment package, despite the fact that the land around Camden Yards is already owned by other people and being used. Whatever the case may be, though, it just highlights the desire of MLB owners to, again, just, just try to stick it to 
taxpayers and public funding. It's not enough that they're willing to give you money. They have to give you more money than what they offer. It baffles me as to why this is. And we've seen it in Oakland. We're seeing it in Milwaukee. We're seeing it in Chicago. It's playing out a very similar way regardless. A city or a a government or whatever body is collecting the funds from the governmental side of things will make some sort of offer and the owner says no that's not enough we need this astronomical sum which they clearly don't need and then there's just this protracted negotiation process that does nothing but piss everyone off that's involved in it 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 pisses off fans who are the ones who really bear the brunt of this drama it is the most toxic thing ever and yet the mlb cannot get enough of it instead of just being reasonable and understanding hey our billionaires do have lots of money in Maybe it isn't unreasonable to expect them to not try to freaking get extract every ounce of value, ounce of resource you can get from a public entity. Maybe meeting them in the middle or maybe just not digging them around would be, I don't know, good. The Angelos has said they were committed to Baltimore. They didn't want to leave Baltimore. And yet they let the Camden Yards saga play out over months and months and months why so they could have a few more bucks tossed to a certain project or they could get a little less oversight on this or whatever the case may be it's irrelevant because what i think you saw quite a bit is that the ownership and the saga around camden yards harmed what is actually one of baseball's better stories this season when i was at camden yards i thought to myself on several occasions why would you want to play your baseball games anywhere else if Baltimore was your city? It doesn't make any sense. Yet, apparently, it did make sense to Orioles ownership on some level. If someone had offered me $600 million in public funds to say, you know, you can use this to make improvements to make sure the stadium ages gracefully, like it has in the first 30 years. So the next 30 years will be just as kind to this fantastic stadium. It's something that you would snap your hands off at. And yet, for the Angelos, it wasn't good enough. They had to take their time. They had to just really be total just dicks about the situation, despite the fact that they claim to be Baltimore through and through. I don't blame them, though, for this. I blame Major League Baseball and its cartel leader, Rob Manfred. I don't have any proof of this. I don't know how it plays out, but you have to think he is in owner's ears telling them you basically have to hold cities hostages or else it's a bad look for the other owners. So in the case of the Orioles, it meant dragging out what should have been a simple decision to renew a lease that probably should have been done years ago. In the case of Oakland, it means John Fisher gets to fucking be just the worst human being alive. In Milwaukee, and in Chicago, you have ownership groups, again, trying to basically extort cities for whatever added value they'll give to keep their Major League Baseball team. The entire thing reeks. It is greed for the sake of greed. There's no reason, there's no logic behind it, and it sucks. What really just irritates me more than anything else was the victory lap, both the Orioles ownership and the politicians involved in this deal took when the Orioles agreed to renew their lease at Camden Yards. This thing, this whole situation, it sucked for fans. It created a lot of unnecessary uncertainty. It created a ton of anxiety. And here you are celebrating something that common sense should have dictated got done way earlier. And it'll be like this for every stadium situation. You'll have these greedy owners acting as like they they care about the city and that they care about what's happening, despite the fact that they were willing to point a gun at the city's head to get more resources, more money, more whatever the case may be. And then you'll have the cities turn around and thank the teams for holding them hostage. What are we doing here? This is a joke, and this just highlights the MLB and its need for greed. It's a terrible situation. 
I don't really get it. And honestly, it's not a good look for Major League Baseball. But then again, Rob Manfred has shown time and time again, he doesn't really care about how he looks or how the league looks. So in conclusion, I will say this. If you are a baseball fan, Camden Yards has got to be a ballpark you get to. It is just, it's hard to explain, but I have never had a feeling of enjoyment watching the sport as I get there. It's right up there with all of the great ballparks that at least I've been to. And I think the way it embraces the history of the team, as well as the city of Baltimore, it's second to none. And I cannot say enough great things about Camden Yards. As for Baltimore Orioles leadership in John Angelos, well, I'll say this to you right there, buddy, right there. Screw you. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, congrats on not having to move a team that's beloved by its city and plays in a fantastic ballpark. Job well done, asshole. That does it for me. I am Cheyenne Hollis. This is the Touchback, and as always, hashtag take it out to the 25.